Up to this point, we've gotten really good at evaluating integrals to find the function, the antiderivative function. But we haven't actually evaluated those at points and talked about what that means. That's what we're going to take a look at today as we answer the question, how do we evaluate integrals between points. And so just kind of to show what we're talking about here as an example, um, let's say I've, I've got some company and sales grew. When we talk about sales growth, that's the change in sales. That's really the derivative. at a rate of s of t is equal to 48e to the 1.2t, where t is the number of years after the year 2000. We want the total sales between 2003 and 2007. Well, like we said, the sales growth rate, a growth rate, the rate of change, that is the derivative, which means to calculate the sales, we need the antiderivative of this. So what we would do is we would integrate the 48e to the 1.2t dt. And we know with our e shortcut, that's going to be e to the 1.2t times the 48 divided by 1.2 plus a constant. Well, 48 divided by 1.2 is 40e to the 1.2t plus a constant. Well, we're interested specifically in the sales between 2003 and 2007. And this is interesting what happens there. Um, we take the antiderivative at 3. That's at 3 years after 2000, 2003. That's going to be 40e to the 1.2 times 3 plus a constant. And if we put that in our calculator, we'll end up with 1,463.93 plus the constant. And if we plug the 7 into the antiderivative, that'll tell us the total sales up to year 7. Well, that's 40e to the 1.2 times 7 plus a constant, which turns out to be $177,882.67. Plus some constant. Well, to find out the sales between these two years, we just have to take the last one and subtract the first one off to see what actually happens between those values. So we will do the f of 7, total sales through seven years, subtract f of 3, total sales for the first three years, and that'll give us everything between 3 and 7. Well, that's going to be 177. 882.67 plus C minus, keeping my units, the 1463.93 plus C. And if we distribute the negative through, we get 177,882.67 plus a constant minus 1,463.93 plus plus a constant, Oops, minus the constant, because we distribute the negative. And that's really nice, because the plus a constant minus a constant subtract out to 0. And so all we have to do is actually subtract these numbers to find the sales between year 3 and year 7. We're actually $176,418.74. And this kind of hints at the process of what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the total between two points. And to do that, we just subtracted 
the upper limit of 7 and the lower limit of 3. That's the idea behind what we call the fundamental theorem of calculus. As we look at the fundamental theorem of calculus, just a reminder of some notation. We're going to let the capital F of x be the antiderivative of the lowercase f of x. And so the fundamental theorem of calculus says that we can integrate from a to b of the lowercase f of x dx, we find that antiderivative f of x, and we can evaluate it from a to b, which means we take the upper limit of b and subtract the lower limit of a. The idea of the fundamental theorem of calculus is we find the antiderivative, the capital F of x, and then we plug in the top number and the bottom number and subtract those results to get the amount of stuff that happens in between those. So for example, if I wanted to know how much stuff there was between 1 and 4 of 3x squared, we integrate it dx. And we know the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed. And then we divide by the 3, which clears out the 3. And we're going to say we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 4. That means we plug the top number in, cubed, and subtract the bottom number in there, cubed, which becomes 64 minus 1, or just 63 is the amount of stuff between 1 and 4 of the 3x squared. Let's try another one. Let's integrate from 6 to 10 x squared plus 3x dx. Well, we know the antiderivative is x cubed times a third. And with the x, we have x squared. And then we'll divide by the 2. So we have 3 halves. And we want to integrate that from 6 to 10. There's really two ways to do the plugging back in with polynomials like this that's really nice. Uh, one way is we can just plug 10 in the top, 1 third times 10 cubed plus 3 halves times 10 squared. And then we do the opposite signs or subtract as we plug the bottom number in of 6. Minus 1 third times 6 cubed minus 3 halves times 6 squared. And if we were to plug that all in our calculator, we end up with 1,072 over 3. But with polynomials, we have another option is we can do the subtraction uh, term by term. In other words, we can take 1 third times, and then we'll do the 10 cubed minus the 6 cubed, plus 3 halves times, and we'll do the 10 squared minus the 6 squared. Both of those will give you the same answer. And some people prefer one way. Some people prefer the other way. It only really works with the polynomials. So be careful plugging into things like natural logs and exponentials. But with a polynomial, you can do the subtraction term by term, which sometimes comes out a little nicer. Let's do one more example. Let's integrate from 0 to 2 to e to the negative 2x dx. Finding the antiderivative, we know that's going to be e to the negative 2x. And then we divide by the negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And we're integrating this from 0 to 2. This one's not a polynomial, so we can't just do the substitution 
in the exponent. We have to do the actual subtraction. So we've got the top one plugged in, e to the negative 2 times 2, minus the bottom number plugged in. But notice we subtract a negative e to the x, which now makes it positive, e to the negative 2 times 0. Well, that becomes e negative e to the negative 4 plus e to the 0, which is 1. And so we end up with our final answer, negative e to the negative fourth plus 1. Now, evaluating these limits is generally straightforward. But there's one thing we need to be careful of, and that's if we end up doing a substitution problem. Because with substitution, the limits are what the x equals. And so when we change to use, that's going to change what the limits actually become. But what's nice is it actually saves us work at the back end. So with substitution, we need to also use the u equals equation to change the limits. Here's what I mean by that. If we're integrating from 0 to 1, 18x over 3x squared plus 7dx, we recognize with substitution, I can make this whole denominator equal to my u of 3x squared plus 7. And then the du becomes 6x dx, which means we want 6x dx. We have 18x dx. So we have to divide the 18 by 3 and multiply by 3 outside. And when we do that, we have 3 times the integral. And then I have to take these limits of 0 and 1 and plug them into x for the u equation. So for the upper limit, the 1, we have 3 times 1 squared is 3, plus 7 is 10 for my new upper limit. For my lower limit, we're plugging the 0 into that equation. 3 times 0 squared plus 7 is 7. Then the 6x dx all becomes a du. And we're left with 1 over my u. But what's nice here is we're not going to actually have to change back anymore. Now we know this is going to be 3 times the natural log of u. And we just have to integrate u from 7 to 10. Because we've changed to u's, we can plug these numbers directly into my solution. So we have 3 natural log of 10 minus 3 natural log of 7. And if we want to, we can use some of our uh, natural log properties. So that becomes 10 cubed minus 7 cubed. And subtracting two logs becomes division. So we have the natural log of 10 sevenths cubed. But probably the brown answer would have been sufficient. Let's try one more substitution problem so we can practice changing the limits as we evaluate the amount of stuff between the numbers. Let's integrate from 0 to 1, x minus 2 times e to the x squared minus 4x dx. And we might notice that x squared minus 4x can all become my u. That means my du is going to be 2x minus 4 dx, which doesn't quite look like what we have in the problem because we have an x minus 2. But notice if we were to factor out a 2, it does look very close. So really, we just need to multiply by a 2 and a 1 half to make the format we want. So we have 1 half times the integral of, we'll plug the limit of 1 in. 1 squared minus 4 times 1 is negative 3.
plugging the 0 in, 0 squared minus 4 times 0 is 0. Then the 2 and the x minus 2 and the dx all become my du. And we're left with e to the u. And this is an integral we can quickly take. It's 1 half e to the u integrated from 0 to negative 3. Plugging in those values, we have 1 half times e to the negative 3 minus the lower limit, 1 half times e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so we have 1 half e to the negative 3 minus 1 half times 1 is just 1 half for our final solution. So we're really doing a lot of the same stuff we've seen in the past two videos. We're just taking antiderivatives and adding one step to the end where we plug in our limits of integration. Take one extra step in substitution. Remember, we're also changing those limits of integration, those numbers, with the u equals equation. So now it's your turn. Take a look at practicing some of these on the homework assignment. Come to class with questions. And then we'll look at some applications. These definite integrals are very useful to us in applications of business and economics because we can actually start finding uh, the amount of stuff either gained or lost over time. So we'll take a look at those in class.